Hi and welcome back to Bill's Cichlid Room. Today I thought we'd just go around a couple of the tanks and have a look and see what's been happening this week. This is the Geophagus Stantectori. I have a trio of these and both the females are holding at the moment. So this is the male, he shares the tank with the Polonai. Yeah, the common name for these are the Red Hump Cichlid. I can't imagine why. <laughs> Yeah, that's a male polynai that's chasing everything round in the tank but a little bit more on that later in the video this is one of the females that started to release the fly it actually it actually took me a couple of days to get a video of the fry actually out and going back into the mouth so this is my first attempt and what i did on the second attempt i crept up to the tank with the camera ready to actually video them and i just snuck up put the vid there put the camera in front of the tank and press record as you can see as soon as you see me all the fry straight back into the mouth which is quite amazing to watch so this will be another week or two before she actually lets them out the tank uh, lets them out into the tank and stops taking them back in what i'll do then i'll put the female back in with the male The video I put up last week with the Hogers, uh, quite a lot of interest on that video, quite a lot of comments. The guy who actually raised them uh, got in touch and gave me a lot of information on them, which is quite interesting. So the, the RF2 from Wild, um, it seems like the Wild ones were actually caught in 2008. And with these ones, I might get this the wrong way around, the mum come from Cichlids of America and the dad come from Jeff Raps, all the other way around. <laughs> so what's been happening in this tank? Uh, the female spend the most of the time in the cave, but she has eaten. As you can see, I've just fed them and there's a lot of food just outside the cave. The male comes over to investigate. And the female actually comes out and picks up the food. Yeah, so he's not actually being aggressive to her from what I can tell. Uh, it might just be his size, <laughs> uh, but yeah, she, she does come out uh, as a swim round. Uh, he, he comes over and then she goes back inside. So it, it, it's two weeks they've been in the tank now, so it looks like she is starting to settle down. It's the homemade frozen food that I did in the video uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, which has got lots of peas and shrimps in it. And yeah, she's definitely interested in the food. This is the tank with the Neotropolis and the fry. So these are the fry that were actually, um, they were born on Christmas Eve. So it's a couple of months ago now. Uh, I did take about half the, uh, the batch out to grow on and left the other half in here and um, thinking once the parents stopped, um, stopped the brood care, they, they just disappear. 
but believe it or not they haven't so th there's about 20 to 30 fry still in here in between all the rocks and the, the cracks in the rocks and under the bog wood uh, the cutter ride there's still a couple of fair uh, fry in there not that many to be fair uh, and one of the pairs of the Nicaragua Gwents. So th I've actually got three pairs of these now. Oh, you can see the the, the, the needs the back to the normal colour. The male's back to his normal colour now. Uh, And th this is the rainbow cichlid tank, so there's two spawns going on in here at the moment. You can see all of the all the wrigglers in the back there. And going from the spawn uh, that late last year, there's probably about three or four hundred fry there. <laughs> and this is the fry that hatched last week. Um, so th there's five rainbow cichlids in this tank um, so I've sussed out now it, there's one male and four females and he keeps taking it in terms breeding with them so there's always eggs or fry in this tank she's doing quite a good job of protecting them this time right this is the polline tank so there's six polline in there um, and it looks like there's a form pair, a, a, a pair form now. Um, so this is what I believe is the female, and this is what I believe is the male. Now the other four pollen I, they, they've been picking on them over the last day or two, so they're actually all hiding behind the filters, the, the plant pots, the rocks. Every time they try to come out, they're getting chased back behind. So I'm going to have to do some fish moving around. The tank that I put the Guinacara and the Redhead Tapajats and, and the, the Corridorus um, the other week, what I'm going to do is I'll catch those, put those in this tank and catch the pair and put them in the, in the other tank. And I'll probably use some of the the grow out rainbow fry as diver fish and see how they get on. I did breed these once before many years ago. It was an old pair. Really, really interesting. Um, with the eggs themselves, they're like a yellow greenish colour, but they actually do them. It's like frog spawn, so it's not like they do them in a in a pit or anything. It's uh, they actually attach it to to the rocks. Yeah, I've I've moved them all over now. So this is the pair in their new tank with the, the, the this ten of the the rainbow cichlids as uh, as different fish in there. So I've only just put them in here about 10 minutes ago, so they're just getting used to the surroundings. So they've they've gone the lighter colour, which is what they tend to do when they're a bit stressed out. There's not a mark on these two perfect fins. So the female's about three and a half inch, and the male's about four and a half inch at the moment. But watching uh, in Scott's video from the King and Queen Cichlids, uh, what Jim Cummins was saying to him, Jim Cummins and Paul Lewisell, is they actually do breed a lot, uh, a lot more often when they're young fish. You know, th this is the aftermath of um, of the four that are left over, so they're coming out now. Um, but you can see there's chunks missing out out of some of them. So th it looks like I have got the other ones out just in time. So what's left in here, there's four of them, there's one large one and three smaller ones, so if they are sexed by size at this size, there's one male and three females. Now even the males got chunks out of them. G 
Chief Vegas tap adjust. They don't seem to be bothered what tank they're in. <laughs> they're just going about the business. <laughs> I've actually got some new fish as well. This is Paracromus Lewiselli. So I've got a group of six of these um, which I picked up yesterday. So they're only one and a half to two inches. Uh, so they've got a lot of growing to do. But I've put them in with the rainbow cichlids uh, just to grow on. And they're one of my favorite uh, Paracromus. They don't get as big as the the, the jaguars uh, or the, the the red motos, and apparently they're not as aggressive either. So it's quite a busy tank this one now. There's lot there's lots of different fish in there, so hopefully there won't be any aggression. And with the rainbows breeding all the time, that will keep them occupied. <laughs> Looking at the markings, some of them have got a lot more markings than others, so hopefully there will be a couple of pairs. Yeah, as you can see, they are still quite small. The tetras, the when I say these tetras are actually bigger than them at the moment. Anyway, that's about it for this week. So um, I'll do another one next weekend. Um, Thanks for watching. If you get a chance, press the subscribe button, uh, ring the bell notification. And thanks to uh, Rick from Predator Aquatics. See you all next week.